So for the first, first couple of years, my PSA stayed fairly stable. And uh, then we started to see a rise. And uh, biopsy, my, uh, at the, in the, th in the uh, s towards the end of the second year, we started to find more aggressive cancer. We found uh, Gleason 3 plus 4, uh, much greater volume. And again, the PSA was, was continuing to rise. And at that point, um, I sought, sought out a specialist back east who uh, put me on uh, some supplements, some other basic medications like, um, like Avidart. And um, we saw a decline in PSA, biopsy a year after that, could no longer find any uh, Gleason pattern 3 plus 4 was all back to 3 plus 3, and the volume had decreased significantly as well. And my PSA uh, ultimately settled down to um, uh, the low ones. Uh, then a year ago, I went and met Foreman, and, and this might have been coincidental, I don't know, but my PSA dropped to 0.7, and it has stayed exactly at 0.7 for over a year now. The specialist I work with back east had, uh, I remember him saying that one of the things that he got wrong was he thought that all of this excitement about metformin that came out a few years ago and its possible uh, positive impact on cancer had to be overblown because it was just it, it was just too much excitement. Everyone was being um, uh, ascribing too much credit to the potential for metformin. And he said, now he really suspects that it does have an impact. The, the regimen that I have now for monitoring the prostate cancer is a blood test quarterly. I had been doing them monthly up until just about a year ago. Uh, but now I, do, now I do quarterly blood tests, um, PSA, free PSA, PAP, um, uh, periodically do a lipid panel, but, but for sure the PSA, uh, free PSA, the PAP, and uh, DHT, dihydrotestosterone, uh, every quarter. Um, I go in for a color Doppler uh, transrectal ultrasound every six months, and I get I now get a uh, multiparametric MRI annually.